I call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Public Works this Tuesday, December 5th of 2023. Uh, just a note, um, if you are on Zoom this evening and would like to make public comment at some point during the evening, if you will either type in the chat or use the raised hand function, uh, then we will uh, make sure to acknowledge your comments. Um, first on the agenda this evening is messages from board members. Do we have any messages from the board? Next up is petitions and remonstrances. Uh, this is the time in the meeting when uh, we welcome public comment on something not on our agenda. Um, if you'd like to make a public comment on something not on our agenda, uh, you can either, uh, if you're on Zoom, use the raised hand function or the chat function, or you can approach the microphone in the room if you're here in the room. I have nothing on Zoom. All right, seeing none. Next is Title VI abatements. Uh, we have abatement at 1315 West 7th Street. Hello, I'm Rebecca Davis. I work for Housing and Neighborhood Development. Um, I am here to request that uh, we get a continuous abatement on a property at 1315 West 7th Street. Um, I began issuing notices of violation in July uh, through to November, um, five in total, and yeah. Thank you. Um, questions on this item? What kind of communication have you had with the property owner? I have not had communication with the property owner. I spoke with uh, someone who said he was her son. Um, so he's received some of, most of the notices of violation um, by hand. He usually meets me when I'm there to post them. But I have not uh, spoken with the property owner. Any other questions here? Maybe just one question. Um, how, did, how did Hand come to find out about this property? Was it? just noticed during it was yeah. noticed during uh, my uh, neighborhood time when I drive around um, I have the northwest area of Bloomington um, so just driving around the trash was visible from a couple of different uh, road points yeah thanks uh, is the um, resident or property owner on the call right now or at present Uh, do we have any public comment on this item? Okay, seeing none. Uh, is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve the abatement at 1315 West 7th Street. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next up, we have the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda, we have requests for dumpster placement from Hokanson Construction at North Pidellis Drive. Resolution 2023-79, Renew Mobile Vendor, Pili's Party Truck, number one. Resolution 2023-80, Renew Mobile Vendor, Pili's Party Truck, number two. Resolution 2023-82, New Mobile Vendor, Filipino Fusion, LLC. 2024 funding agreement with CATS, 2024 PEG content provider agreement with MCPL, 2024 PEG content provider agreement with WTIU, 2024 BDU use agreements with MCCSC, MCPL, and Monroe County Government, 2024 service agreement with Corson Fire and Security, 2024 service agreement with Strausser Construction, 2024 service agreement with Tabor Bruce Architecture and Design, 2024 service agreement with Thrasher Landscaping, 2024 service agreement with Trinkle Snow Plowing, 2024 service agreement with Umfris Masonry, 2024 service agreement with Vet Environmental, renewal of asphalt materials contract with e &B Paving Inc. as the primary and milestone contractors as the secondary, implementation of CityWorks asset management software system, and approval of payroll. Do we have any items that need to be removed from the consent agenda this evening? No. Okay. Do we have any public comments on anything within the consent agenda? All right. Seeing none, is there a motion on the consent agenda? 
I move that we approve the consent agenda for tonight's meeting of December 5, 2023. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Crone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up, we have new business. A first under new business is the MOU for Monroe County Humane Association lease buyout. Good evening, uh, Alex Brett from City Legal. Uh, so the city and the Monroe County Humane Association, or MCHA, uh, are seeking to terminate a lease agreement. Um, under that agreement, the MCHA was leasing a, por a portion of the animal sh shelter facility rent-free for 40 years uh, in exchange for transferring its property rights to the city. And under the memorandum of understanding that is currently pending in front of the board, um, <clears throat> that agreement will be terminated and the city will pay the MCHA uh, $95,000 as compensation for uh, the rest of that period of 20 years. Um, and the funding for the purchase will come from the appropriation ordinance that is scheduled for first reading for tomorrow in front of city council. I can take any questions. Thank you. Uh, questions on this item? Um, I was looking at the original agreement and um, I was trying to discern uh, how we came to the um, amount of money uh, that we're paying? Um, so I believe the amount was the negotiated amount between the parties. Uh, the RAF estimate was $100,000. Um, and after negotiations, that, that amount uh, came down to $95,000. Um, Is it ninety five or ninety four? I believe. It is 95,000. And um, there was, in the original agreement, there was some language about, um, you know, any kind of modifications or any adjustments that might need to be made. Is, is that, is, is all of that resolved? Maybe that has something to do with the negotiation um, of the <laughs> amount. But I just wanted to confirm that any outstanding you know, modifications to the structure or something that needed to be adjusted at this point um, has been taken care of. Sure, um, here's Virgil who can answer this. Hi, Virgil Sauter, Director of Animal Care and Control. Um, for both those questions, yeah, every modification stuff that's um, taken care of, there hasn't been, modifications that have been done to the place actually were done as part of the last renovations um, that we undertook at the shelter. Um, so they were city-led um, renovations. And then as far as the negotiated amount, um, that amount that we negotiated, um, we were basically looking at the original lease amount as kind of our base point. So we actually came in under what um, the actual buyout would be if we were to move and have to provide that amount for the, the association. Um, so that amount, um, if we were to, according to the old language of the contract, was about a hundred thousand one hundred dollars would have been that what the buyout but through the agreement it was that we ended up at the ninety five. Any other questions or anything? Okay. Uh, are there any public comments on this item? Okay. Seeing none. Is there a motion on this item? I move that we approve the MOU for the Monroe County Humane Association lease buyout. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is resolution 2023-81, uphold order to vacate and order to remove at 410 through 414 South Walnut Street. Hello, Mike Arnold from HAND. Uh, this is a property that we've had an order to seal on for a couple of years now. 
Um, October 2021 was when we did the first order to seal. Um, we redid that order um, in September of 2023. And since we, since that time, we've had some dispatches from Bloomington Police and Bloomington Fire Department to the property and they raised some concerns about the safety of the property and the safety concerns of people that might be in the property. Um, and based on their information and based on the, the problems we've had with keeping it sealed, although when we've asked for um, the property to be sealed when it was out of compliance, they have gone back and resealed it. But um, based on some of the information from the Bloomington Fire Department, we decided to do an upgrade to orders to remove on the structures. Um, we had a meeting last week with the, the owner and the owner's attorney and came up with some um, ideas on how to seal the property and have um, some issues taken care of so that they could move forward with re rehabbing the property if they choose to do so. Um, and we have an agreement with, that, with them on that and we did send a letter outlining the, those items to the owner. And we're okay with that moving forward but we would like the board to uphold the order just in case um, issues in the future require the necessity to do an order to remove. Thank you. And if you have any questions. Questions on this item. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just to kind of restate in terms dumb enough that I can understand them. Um, so you would like the request to vacate or to remove even though you're hopeful that the terms you've agreed to or discussed with the property owner. Yeah, so that if the issues arise where it's not feasible for the the work to be done or for the property to be rehabbed and reused, then we can just move forward instead of starting over again. Okay, thanks. And the owner is here also. Um, one more question. Could one of the structures could potentially be historic and so there would be a stay? Yeah, part of, the, part of the reasons that we've Demolition. done an order to repair or order to seal for so long is because one of the structures is contributing as a historic property and um, orders to remove for it would require that it, it do demolition delay and go through historic preservation. So since this then, the order would kind of be held by hand just in case, I would just request that you keep the board or that hand keeps the board kind of through the process so we know. Yeah, we can certainly keep you updated. The, the, the order is good for two years, so um, that's that's part of the reason we'd like to keep it, uh, go ahead and get it approved. And following on that um, question, my packet is, has become unnavigable, so I apologize, I have to ask you a question about something that's probably very clear in it. Um, what is the timeline for removal as it's stated in the order currently? Um, as it's stated, it currently is 60 days. Um, the, the state laws for unsafe structures say that you have to give a minimum of 10 days and a maximum of 60 days. We know that a maximum of 60 days may not be long enough, especially if it has to go through the, the permitting process and go through um, historic preservation. So as long as things are moving forward, we can be a little bit flexible on the back end of that. And if they're willing to do the work to make the um, property or the buildings habitable, then then we're okay with that as well. And what is uh, the city's sort of deadline for um, ensuring that the property is properly sealed uh, or, you know, in some way remediated to where hand would be satisfied with the Yeah, status? so we did send a letter that should have gone out Friday. They may or may not have received it. I'm, I'm not sure if they have. Uh, requesting that uh, the deadline of December 8th for the properties to be sealed properly and for some information about um, having um, secure security company um, making visits to the property and then we did a deadline of December 15th to get a, a timeline or a proposed timeline of, of how they plan to move forward with making the property habitable. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board at this point? Okay. And the owner is here too, so. 
Yeah, if the property owner wants to make any comments, you're welcome to at this time before I open up to public comment. My name is Jason McCauley. I'm the attorney for the owner, Jeffrey Jones. Um, as Mr. Arnold stated, we've had good communication um, amongst everyone. This is not a situation of an absent owner or not, not reacting. And it's also not illegally occupied at his insistence. It's not like he's inviting these folks in. It's been sealed repetitively. Um, Mr. Arnold said that there were two occasions where there were orders to seal issued. There have been, um, I've been in communication with city legal for hand, whether it's been Ms. Newbell or Daniel Dixon or, or Chris. Um, they sometimes will call me and say, hey, we've got an issue over there. And, and so we've sealed the building up probably no less than a dozen times in that time frame. The issue is that um, is security. And, and uh, so we want to be in full compliance to, to secure the buildings. Um, what we have proposed is, so there are two buildings. Uh, there are three addresses. The southernmost building is 414 South Walnut. It is not the one that's labeled as contributing. We intend to take that down. We're taking estimates for that right now. As part of that process, we're going to take an estimate to see if what it costs to take both down. Um, we're thinking that, that we need most of December to figure that out, what the cost looks like, what it is that we can do. Um, and so um, we are planning on keeping 412, 414, that's one building. That's the one that's contributing. Mm -hmm. But if that estimate comes in and it's wildly uh, inexpensive to just make it go away with both, then okay, that's fine. What we would like to do and what we would ask the board to do is to modify the order modify the order uh, to, for removal. In this instance, we would like, because of the time frame, even to take down 414 South Walnut, we would like to have that extended by 30 days to be February 16th of 2024. We're asking for that with this in mind also. That structure is not the one that has been breached recently. It's got OSB, it's plywooded up. Um, when we met there on November 30th, 412, 414 had been breached. There were, had been people in there. It was sealed up that day as we left that meeting. So unless it's been breached again, it should be sealed right now. So we've hopefully already complied with what Mr. Arnold has asked for by the 8th. Um, as far as the 15th deadline of trying to get some estimates, we're working on estimates for removal of both buildings, but we're also looking at estimates to see what is it gonna take to make 412, 414 habitable. And our goal is to make a commitment to hand to say, let's do it by March 31st, 2024. Um, in the interim, what we would ask is for that modification of the order, allowing removal of 414, yes, but until February 16th of 2024, we would ask for um, a continuation of the order in regard to 412, 414, to the next, to the regularly scheduled meeting date on January 16th, 2024. With this in mind, and the reason is so that we have time to take some estimates to figure out whether or not renovation is possible. And number two, and, and in addition to that, we will make a commitment that we're hiring security. So the building is sealed. There's no electricity on right now. There will be electricity if we start renovating. But without electricity, lighting's an issue and so people are breaking in. So what we're gonna do is provide um, hand with proof that, hey, we've got a security company coming by. We probably are gonna have someone employed that's gonna be there sometimes overnight doing some removal, et cetera. Um, not habitating there, but just to get some stuff out. Um, so what we would ask is a modification, mostly as to 412, 414, to, to continue that one to January 16th, 2024, and then for uh, an extension of time to remove 414 to February 16th. Right. The northernmost building is 410, 412. Yeah. And then it goes to 414 is the southernmost building that's going to be removed. Thank you. Uh, we probably have questions for staff. Um, we have questions. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I guess I would just look for staffs. Thank you, first of all, for addressing the issues and giving us a summary of your request. 
could you talk to us about staff's recommendation regarding the extension and then also logistically how we would handle that because I see the dates mentioned in the orders but not in the um, uh, resolution that we're actually s responsible for tonight. So the orders already exist with their dates and I don't know that we have the ability to modify them here. Well, I don't know about uh, how to address the extension of the dates because that's part of the date, the time frame, so 10 to 60 days are what the state says you can do and so I don't, I don't know the answer to that one. As far as modifying to removal for 414 and and not removing 410, 412, we could do that as long as we the, under, the agreement is upheld where they have security there and it is maintained sealed and we don't have other issues with uh, Bloomington Fire Department, Bloomington Police Department um, and the concerns. One of the problems that created the reason for us to do the order to remove was they were concerned for their safety when they were in the house on the runs. Um, and as long as it's gonna maintain sealed and there's security to, to ensure that, then. I think we would be okay with modifying the, uh, the order. Could someone from legal speak to what would be possible um, from the state, please? Thank you. Colleen Newbill, City Legal. Um, on the resolution itself, there should be an option for you to modify uh, the order issued by hand. Um, in that space, you could, if you wish to um, change the timeline for that, you could probably put that in there. We would probably either have to print it out for you so you can handwrite it or we could send a Word document to you uh, to update on that side. Um, under the statute, um, so unsafe is actually a state statute that has been incorporated into our ordinances. The hearing authority, which would be the Board of Public Works, does have the authority to actually extend that if they um, find good cause. Do you have the ability to extend? You do, correct. write your modifications on this order um, and then you could sign it based on okay. what. Could I ask hand staff to come back just for a second? So now that we've heard from legal what we are able to do, can I go back to Jane's question about staff recommendation based on if yes, we have the ability to do what's been requested? If we can get approval through the director of the department, then we shouldn't have an issue with that. I'm, I'm not necessarily the one that can make the final determination for that. Um, w one of my immediate concerns is that um, even with the best efforts uh, that all parties might have, there could still certainly be an unsafe condition um, because of just the nature of the, the property, the history of the property. We have a lot of out of compliance that may most likely, as mentioned before, had nothing to do with the property owner, um, but rather other activities happening. Um, and it sounds like, you know, the city's, the, the city's request is to um, have this order in place so that proper action can be taken if that unsafe situation persists, um, but with the recognition that you're trying to work collaboratively and avoid that problem. Correct. Um, so, you know, my, my worry is that we already, the fire department has already identified that this is a, a serious concern. Um, I, I just, my perspective is we we do we, there is a sense of urgency in having this resolved, and I would be concerned about extending that given the history of the property. Well, I thanks, Kyla. I would just add that maybe we we could revisit. It sounds like there's good cooperation on both sides, um, efforts to move forward. And this board is also, um, I think, receiving information from all the parties, so perhaps we would consider an extension down the road if that were something that was needed. Um, but maybe we needn't consider it today. Is that what I'm hearing? And from a legal perspective, would we be permitted to adjust the order at a later date? If that's... 
Um, if the board decides to continue, like uh, Mr. McCauley had requested um, at least part of it, then the order wouldn't be for both property or both addresses. It would simply be for the 414 to remove and then the 410 to 412 to, we would be extending that one, um, I believe a little further. Did I have that one right? Okay. Um, so the order would only address one of the two structures. So theoretically, yes, you could modify it at a later date if we needed to. Um, if we ever did need to, I believe the unsafe statute does actually allow us to also recall it um, and we can reissue if we needed to. So there are a couple different mechanisms in place if we need to adjust or make changes as well. Once we do it, it's not necessarily strictly set in stone. We can modify as, as we need to. To say, I also really appreciate the collaboration. Um, I'm a little concerned about changing the order without the approval of the department head, as Mike stated. Um, I'll just put that out there. Thanks. Yep. You can have another couple minutes. So, well, alternatively, and, and I, I haven't seen Mr. Arnold's letter, very well could be at my office today, but I haven't seen that, so I haven't had a chance to talk with him about the specifics of that, but given the fact that hand director hasn't had a chance to talk about this. I mean, we were just at the property on November 30th, so this is pretty accelerated. Um, alternatively, we would just ask for a continuance as to both to the December 19th Board of Public Works, and if that is preferable to get the hand director's take on that. Thank you. If, if there were to be a continuance, uh, of this item, does that change anything um, for hand staff as far as the way that this is handled or does that just um, change the window in which we're making a decision? It would most likely just change the window to make the decision. We would we would hope that they maintain it as sealed and, and go ahead through with the process of getting the security um, company involved. Okay. I'm a little concerned with a potential continuance only because of the Bloomington Fire Department issues that they've had that I agree with you seem fairly urgent. And I don't know that pushing this down two weeks without some mechanism of securing the building. We had, when we were uh, at the property, I saw some of the issues, or I'm aware of some of the issues that the fire department had and I think that structurally the items that they had a problem with could be rectified fairly easily. And I know part of their problem was um, with the living conditions that the people who, the unauthorized people who had gotten into the property were living in, I know they've cleaned all of that up. So um, it, it's probably been minimized on the concerns for the fire department, but there are some that are still there that we may want to get addressed just in, in the meantime. That is helpful. I also just want to clarify, um, because there, we're talking about a lot of date spans and all of that, um, that uh, the the same, like the order you already have in place that you're seeking the board to uphold, the terms of that order are in existence r right now, but we would need to uphold it for you to take additional action is that you would have to uphold it for us to take action on the on the order to remove okay so the city is not intending on removing the structure before december 19th no but that you would require our action to do that removal otherwise all of the terms that have been put forward are in in effect it's just simply the removal that um, has to have our approval. Is that right? I think that's. Where's she? Is she the right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's correct. Yes. Yeah, so right now there is an uh, an active order to seal, which is ongoing as um, well. We have issued a new order to vacate because obviously people have been residing in the home unauthorized as well. And then separate from that, we do have the order to remove. So under state statute, for us to be able to ask. To them to vacate the property or to remove the property, we have to have your authority before we can have them do that. Um, 
with regard to the concerns about the safety, those are actually drafted as two separate orders, even though they are all in one resolution. You could modify, if you so chose, to go ahead and uphold the order to vacate, which would then also just go with the order to seal, which is currently in existence. And then we could continue the order to remove until the next hearing um, to make any decisions on that. And I believe Mr. McCauley is also okay with that, if that is preferable for the board um, tonight. Okay, that makes sense to me. Because I'm also confused about the dates and the numbers, can I just confirm that we would then uphold the order to vacate 414 and do continue to the next meeting the order to remove 410 and 412? We would actually be, the <laughs> we would go ahead and say um, uphold the order to vacate for both properties even though, so 410 and 412 is the one that we know currently had people um, inhabiting the space. 414, we believe no one has um, accessed it. However, we would prefer it to be for both just mm -hmm. in case. And then for the order to remove would also be for the 410, 412, and 414 for now, for the order to remove. Okay. Do you have any other questions before I turn it over to public comment? Okay. Uh, do we have any public comment on this item? Seeing none. Does anyone have a motion? <laughs> Let's see if I can figure this out. Regarding resolution 2023-81, and I will ask you to please make sure that this is correct. I move that we up, uh, uphold the order to vacate 410 through 414 South Walnut Street and continue to our next regularly scheduled meeting the order to remove 410 through 414 South Walnut Street. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. I second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you all. Very Thanks. Much. Thank you. Next up, we have contract with Kreider and Kreider Inc. for the Adams Street sidewalk project. Hello, Jason Kerr from Engineering. Um, this is to award a construction contract for the Adams Street sidewalk project, which includes, it's not limited to, adding sidewalk along the west side of Adams Streets between Kirkwood and Fountain Drive, and then also around the corner at the intersection of Fountain Drive and 8th Street. Uh, there are sections that are sidewalks non-existent currently. This is to add that sidewalk in. Uh, the project will require the closure of southbound lane of Adams Street, uh, traffic will be deterred along 11th, Rogers, and Kirkwood. This will be a 60-day um, lane closure. Um, what engineering is um, asking this evening is we can award it to Kreider and Kreider. They are the lowest um, responsive and reasonable bidder at this time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions from the board on this item? I just want to offer that I'm really pleased about this project. There are a lot of pedestrians and um, traffic gets kind of quick um, along that corridor, so I'm really happy that this I is feel it'll be used quite a lot, yeah. so yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Any public comment on this item? There's nothing on Zoom. Right. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with Kreider and Kreider Inc. for the Adams Street Sidewalk Project. I second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have contract with Kreider and Kreider Inc. for the Moores Pike Southeast Park Trail Improvements Project. Hi, <clears throat> I'm Zach Rogers in Engineering Department. Uh, this project is to realign Renwick Trail and it's extending the culvert, moving the trail south, um, and adding three trees. And there's going to be a two-foot shoulder added to Moore's Pike. So this is all safety of the trail to move it further south away from the road and add a shoulder to the road as well. Um, and Kreider and Kreider was the lowest and responsible and responsive bidders, so engineering department is recommending to award Kreider and Kreider. Thank you. Questions on this item? can't picture it. Is this the south, south side? 
Park of Trail. Moore's Pike. So the corner with the Covenanters uh, Cemetery is not affected by this? No. Okay, thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? I have nothing on Zoom. Okay, seeing none. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the contract with Kreider and Kreider Inc. for the Moores Pike Southeast Park Trail Improvements Project. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Crone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Next up is lane and sidewalk closure request from AEG. Hi, this is Alex Gray from engineering. Uh, so I bring you, I'm just realizing I have a typo on my staff report, but there's three areas in my staff report, it says four. <laughs> Um, but the three areas are North Grant Street area and East 19th Street and then West Hoosier Court Avenue. Most of these are starting to get into the um, IU area and kind of downtown and also on the west side. And moving forward, you'll see that trend too in the next few meetings. And then, um, like I had mentioned in the work session, there has been several homes that have been passed and then about 364 customers that have been added to the network. Just quickly, I think you talked about this at the work session too, but um, I think there was a delay from the last meeting bringing this to us because there was an issue maybe with AEG, and I just wanna make sure that if there were issues with the company, everything's been worked out and the communication yes. continues to be good. Yeah, the issue had been that there was a damage log that we had kept, that way we could know, like kind of have a, a record of issues that have happened in the past. And then we had found that some sections turn from the um, staffing that they had changed and we had our own staffing. There was a miscommunication of how that got linked up with us. And so it's been resolved and we're moving forward and there's been good communication. Great, thank you very much. I also have the door hanger as well. Nice. It's two-sided. I thought that would be a, <laughs> yes, exactly. I thought that would be good to know and to have present. Very good. Uh, do we have any public comments on this item? I see nothing on Zoom. All right, seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the lane and sidewalk closure request from AEG. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Crone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thanks. Next up, we have road closure request from City of Bloomington Utilities at 401 East 4th Street. Hi, it's Alex Gray from Engineer again. I'm helping out with the utilities for this. Um, this one is the intersection of 4th and Grant Street, so it's over near the east side. And the reason why they are wanting to have the intersection closed is so they can bring the manhole up and level it out. Currently, it is very disruptive when you roll over it. It is very tilted and not very comfortable to drive on. <laughs> so the problem was is that they have to excavate around the manhole. They can't just ride at the manhole, fix it. It has to be extended several feet around the manhole, which unfortunately puts it into the intersection. So they have to close the whole intersection for the work. Questions on this item? I'll just say in the work session, we praised everyone's uh, efforts to put this um, work during what should be a pretty good time uh, in the midst of the winter break season. So appreciate that work to get this repaired when it has minimal impact on the traffic and people going through. Any public comments on this item? I see nothing on Zoom. Seeing none, is there a motion? I move that we approve the road closure request from City of Bloomington Utilities at 401 East 4th Street. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Crone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next up, uh, staff reports and other business. I have no staff reports tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, next is approval of claims. 
Um, are there any questions on the claims? All right, any public comment on claims? I see nothing on Zoom. All right, seeing none, is there a motion on the claims? Um, so wait, uh, have we have two, amount, uh, two claims. You so have I've two sets of claims because the last meeting we omitted the claims because there were some errors on the register. Correct. So you have last meeting's claims and also this two weeks claims. And yeah. so on the register of claims with the total amount, does that encompass both sets of claims or are there two claims registers? There are, there two, are two claims registers. registers. Okay, then let me find the That are separated one. by the signature sheet. So your first one is previous. So it Which would be the week ending 11-22. Okay. Yeah, and that one is in the amount of $909,350.99. Yeah, it is on page 480. 480? Yes. Got it. Thank okay. you. And then the uh, second Final one. one is the $2 million. Yes. Okay. Do you, so we'll do them separately? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I move that we approve claims from the register dated 11-22-23 in the amount of $909,350.99. I second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Crone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. And then uh, do we have a motion on the uh, December 8th mm -hmm. dated claims? I move that we approve claims from the claims register dated 12-8-23 in the amount of $2,979,710.99. I second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. I will call the roll. Carone? Aye. Cooper Smith? Aye. Cox Deckard? Aye. Motion passes. And if we have no other business, I will call for adjournment. Thank you. Thank you.